Welcome to Humans Against Poor Scholarship Summer Grant Interviews. Each one of our interviewees is competing for a $2,000 grant to help fund their summer research. Do you want to have a say in who gets funded? Become a HAPS donor today by visiting www.hapsfund.com forward slash donate. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Digital Hammurabi. Contrary to what that little voiceover said, clearly I need to re-record that for our exit interviews. Um, the people we are interviewing at the moment have already been allocated their grant money, they've had their summer of research, and they are coming back to talk to us about what they did, what they found, any problems they had. Um, so without further ado, this is uh, Nagme. Nagme, thank you so much for joining us again. Thank you very much for having me. And, uh... Let's begin. Sure. Why don't you uh, go ahead and just introduce yourself um, and remind the audience what your project was? Yes. So my name is Narne Mansuzadeh. I'm an archaeologist. And at this moment, I'm in the second year of my PhD program at Kafoska University of Venice. And uh, my project is about the evolution of uh, metal arrowheads in the Iranian Fidon Plateau and adjacent regions in, during the historical period. Wonderful. Thank you very much. Um, audience, if you have questions for Nagme as we go through her interview, please do put them in the chat. This is not going to be a long interview, so get your questions in um, as early as possible to make sure that we catch them. So, um, Nagme, how did your summer go? Well, um, my summer went well, uh, and I'm, I'm very happy with the results. Uh, so I, I like to start with the, this phrase. Please. So I uh, during the in specific uh, during the July I went to the National Museum of Iran in uh, Tehran, and I have been access to to study the metal arrowheads from various sites, archaeological sites in Iran. So I start every day I was there uh, to document uh, these objects, measuring very. Very, very detailed and uh, for, in taking photos of uh, various angles in case I will need more information in the future so I will have uh, enough photos. So uh, most of my times I was there with uh, these beautiful objects and uh, I, I was very shocked by the numbers because I expected uh, less than the, the number I at the end I could document it, more than 300 arrowheads I could uh, document that and uh, yeah it was a very tense period of working a lot um, and after finishing uh, this uh, this part of uh, work uh, uh, I, I had to understand very well the archaeological contents of these arrowheads so uh, beyond the the small information that usually they put with the object I needed to understand this uh, uh, better the chronology of the, the sites where they have been found so I shifted my work to the library of the museum, which is a very, very, very well organized library. And uh, I found uh, many excavation reports and uh, other uh, documentation uh, regarding the, uh, this excavation and other studies, later studies, uh, about uh, the objects or site uh, in general. So uh, basically, I was between the museum and the library, and uh, yeah, this was uh, my my summer. <laughs> Thank you. You mentioned that you were you were taking photographs of the arrowheads. What yes. kinds of information can you get from those photographs after you've left the museum? So uh, I uh, I established I. I uh, I should explain in this way. I establish a, a, a systematic description for the arrowheads that uh, it includes a, a, a database that each arrowhead is described by 24 variables or characters. Some of them are categorical and some of them are continuous. So mm, there are some measurements that I can take there, like the lengths, widths, and the things like this. But I also measure some angles of the arrowhead. So the blade and their all the blade and base, the, the connection between blade and base. Uh, and these kind of measurement, measurements are usually uh, recalculated from the photos using some apps uh, that I found that are very, very detailed. 
so basically, I need photos for this kind of uh, uh, information. And sometimes uh, it happens that uh, you have a uh, like a view the moment that you see the the, the object, but later. Uh, when you study other materials, uh, other uh, information, you, you gave other information, you, uh, you change your idea. So revisiting all the data help to, to decide better what is the best description of this uh, typology. Wonderful. Thank you very much. Did you have any, any problems or any, anything unexpected happen during your research? Uh, yeah, actually, unfortunately, I got COVID there, and I it uh, yeah it was very very bad situation. I got sick and uh, made me very weak, and uh, slowed down my work. Uh, so, but in conclusion, the results are uh, very very good. Well, I'm I'm sorry you were sick, but I'm glad that you still managed to get as much research done as you did. Um, so the final question from me before we go to our audience questions. What are you planning on doing next? Where do your studies go from here? So uh, the first thing was during the, this trip, I could mostly gather the data. Uh, since my return, I started to organize them and uh, complete this information, like the, the angle measurements that I explained before. So uh, now I'm working on the database to fill it uh, completely uh, and at the next step I will uh, apply the statistical analysis uh, on this information. At the same time I have to complete the, the background uh, archaeological uh, study uh, of the sites. So because uh, some of the, the, the arrowheads are from the excavation that have been conducted uh, like more than 50 years ago. So the, the stratigraphy uh, information are not very detailed or are not very clear. The publications are not good as nowadays, obviously. Or uh, it, it is very not odd that later uh, works and uh, later research change the chronology of a site or a, a layer or a phase. So uh, I have to update all of my information about these sites and uh, understand very well where have been found these uh, arrowheads. Lovely, thank you very much. So we have a few uh, audience questions. Uh, yes. Just for those those who maybe arrived a little bit late, what university are you currently attending? Uh, uh, Kafoskar University of Venice in Italy. Thank you. Um, and are the arrowheads stone or metal? Metal arrowheads. For now, I only study metal arrows, but in this period of time, which is from the 6th century uh, BC to the 7th century AD, there are also stone arrowheads, but I just only focus on uh, metal arrowheads for the moment. Thank you. Uh, and finally, Scott, how abundant are these arrowheads? Um, he says that when he was a child, he could essentially walk down a river and, and pick up stone arrowheads. Um, can children in Iran do this, or are they much more restricted just to archaeological sites? Uh, the archaeological sites, uh, yeah, they're more restricted the archaeological sites. Okay, lovely. Thank you. Um, we have no more questions from the audience, and I don't have anything to add. So, Nagme, thank you so much for coming back and talking to us about your research. I wish you the best of luck moving forward. Thank you very much. It thank was you very much to for your time. It was very, very good to, to know you and uh, this group and uh, I hope we see each other again. I am sure we will. If you ever want to come back and give us an update, we'd be thrilled to have you. Thank this you. Lovely. Thank you. Very Everyone, much. thank you for watching. If you are interested in HAPS, if this, this is the first you're hearing about it, please go to hapsfund.com to find out more. You can also make a donation there and we will be back next Saturday with two more exit interviews. So thank you all very much.